Okay, so what is the Keychron K3 and why is it so special? A quick trip over to the Keychron website and you'll see exactly what they're going for. This is an ultra low profile slim keyboard coming in at 22 millimeters max height. It has two switch options, one Gatoron low profile and one hot swappable optical switch that they've developed in house. The K3 has wireless support and you can pair it with up to three devices. You can also use it wired as with most wireless keyboards. Backlighting is also included. You can get either a static white or an RGB version. If you're looking for a specific switch type, Keychron has you covered there as well. They offer red, blue, brown, white, black, and orange switches. And one of the best parts is these are MX style switches. So theoretically you should be able to use other keycaps with this keyboard. Keychron went with a 75% layout, which I think is the perfect balance between having a number pad and not, because it still gives you a full set of arrow keys as well as a top function row and F keys. Right now you're probably thinking that is a ton of features crammed into a compact keyboard. This thing is probably super expensive. Well, actually it's only $75 brand new, which if everything comes together is a fantastic value. Let's see if it does. So in the really well packaged box, you get pretty much everything you would need to get started, a manual, a nice helpful card that shows you the basic functions of the keyboard. And then on the back side, it has all the advanced functions, how to control lighting, etc. You also get a braided USB-C cable, which is really nice. Extra keys if you want to switch between Windows and Mac, and also gray keys if you don't want to use orange escape and light keys. You have a key cap puller and a switch puller as well. So everything you would need to get going and get going with this keyboard. On the website, you will also find some accessories for the keyboard. You can get additional switches as well as additional keycaps. I have the browns installed on here currently. This is a set of black switches that I'm gonna try out as well. And also a nice wrist rest that I think looks really good and lines up perfectly with the keyboard. There's some other stuff too, like carrying cases, pouches, stuff like that as well. If you wanna check it out, there's definitely some good options. For me, the 75% layout is much better than the 60% layout because you get your arrow keys here. You also get page up, page down, and in home. You also get a row of function keys and your F keys. So everything that you would need normally outside of a number pad is present here. This is a pretty standard layout while also being very compact. For connectivity around top, you will see the only port, a USB-C port for charging and or connecting to a computer in wired mode. You also have two toggle switches on the left-hand side, one to control Bluetooth wired or off, and then the other to control Windows and Android layout or Mac OS layout. While the deck is metal, the bottom of the keyboard is actually plastic, which obviously keeps the weight down and the cost down. You also have two different size rubber feet, so that gives you a slight incline when you're typing, which I really like. The actual deck and keys are angled, but the keycaps remain flat, which for me makes for a much more comfortable typing experience than your traditional sloped or angled keys. Popping off the keycaps and switches is very easy. All you have to do is take your keycap, pull it there, put it around the size, give it a little pop there. Then you take your switch puller, line it up this way, get it into the grooves, and then pull it out. I've already pulled one out here, as you can see. It's really simple, and then you would take your new switch, line it up, make sure that the pins are lined up, pop it in, and just stick it in place. Really easy, really couldn't be any more simple than this. Now these switches are super low profile at less than 11 millimeters. You can see how small they actually are, and it does appear that they can be taken apart here, and potentially you could even add some loop to them maybe. But they're pretty quiet as is, so I don't know if that's really necessary. Adjusting the lighting and the settings on the keyboard is very easy. Most of these settings can be controlled through a combination of the FN key and one of the buttons on the keyboard. For example, to control which device you're connected to, you hit the FN key, plus one, two, or three. There are little icons there. Also, you can adjust most of your meeting set media settings with the controls up top here, including the lighting. You can either power the lighting on here, or you can use these two buttons here. There are four lighting settings that you can dim it and set it to whatever you want. You can also control what effect you have with this button here. There are 16 different effects. You can cycle through all of them, all the typical stuff you'd expect, breathing, all that fun stuff is there. It's not programmable, but you can cycle through them there. You can also adjust the color of the backlight by hitting the FN and arrow key, and you can cycle through all the colors. There's pretty much every color that you'd 
expect there. And the good thing about white, when it gets to that basic white setting, is it actually looks white. As you can see, it doesn't look like it has a blue cast to it. It's a very nice color, and I typically leave it like this, so you can get the full effect of having a traditional white backlight with the option to go with RGB if you want it. They did a really good job with the functions. There's also a guide on the website where you can see all the advanced functions, and that little card that comes in the box has them on it as well. One of the most surprising things about this keyboard for me was the actual feel of the keys. A lot of times, low profile mechanical keyboards, they bottom out quickly. They don't really feel comfortable to type on. That's not the case here. I have the brown switches as my primary switch here and they feel fantastic. There's a very small bump that lets you know there's some force and some feedback that's required, but it's not overwhelming. It's a truly comfortable typing experience. And they also sound pretty good, especially for unlubed stock switches. So let's take a listen to what the typing sounds like now. After checking out the typing performance, I hopped into some games and the performance there was really good as well. It's not the fastest keyboard you're ever gonna see. And if you are a competitive gamer, I would definitely stick to wired mode. But even wirelessly, if you're playing casual games, I had no issue at all. It was very responsive. I wasn't seeing any ghosting or anything weird like that. Everything worked as it should. The K3 performs admirably. It does pretty much exactly what it's set out to do. There is one area of concern, one issue I had with this, and it's the battery life. The battery life on this keyboard simply is not good, especially not up to today's standards. You pretty much have to charge this thing every three or four days, and that's with backlighting off. With it on, obviously, that cuts down the battery life even more. So I really wish they could have put a bigger battery that lasts a little bit longer. It also has a very aggressive standby time, so it's set to every 15 minutes, and that seems like a decent amount of time, but it's actually not. Imagine if you're watching a video on YouTube or something, it feels like the keyboard's constantly off, and you have to wait for it to wake up while you're typing in inputs, and it just isn't registering. It's very, very annoying. I wish there was a way to adjust it to either make it 30 minutes and just deal with the battery hit or disable it completely. That would be better. So overall, after using this keyboard for about a month as my daily driver, I can say that I really do like it, especially for the price under $100, you get this much functionality. It's really quite impressive. The only issue that I really have had with it is the short battery life. Having to charge the keyboard every four days or so is not what I'm used to, especially from low profile models. But if you have a USB-C cable on hand, it's really not that big of a deal. A small trade off for what you're actually getting. The K3 is perfect for obviously simple typing tasks, but I also really liked it for gaming. If you're a competitive gamer, for sure, you're gonna wanna plug that in and make sure it's wired. But even in wireless mode over Bluetooth, it was decently responsive and I didn't have any issues. So overall, I really can't recommend this keyboard enough with the wireless, the true low profile switches, replaceable keycaps, replaceable hot swappable switches, RGB LEDs, also that nice white backlight so it doesn't look blue if you just want a simple layout, and also the perfect form factor and excellent typing experience. I really can't recommend this enough. It's an excellent keyboard as long as you can deal with the short battery life. The only issue with this might be actually picking one up. It's currently out of stock. I got mine on Kickstarter and I'm not really sure when they're gonna come back in stock, but you can head over to the Keychron website and set up for email alerts. So whenever it does come back in stock, you can pick one up. So as always, thanks for watching guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video. I'm Jay, I'll see you next time.